Most people think celiac disease and gluten intolerance only cause digestive symptoms like abdominal pain and loose stools. But a growing body of research suggests that gluten can have a profound impact on the brain in people who are sensitive to it. This is a huge problem because most people, including doctors, aren't aware of this. If you go to your doctor complaining about anxiety, depression, ADHD, or another brain-related problem, it's extremely unlikely you'll be tested for celiac or gluten intolerance. And if you are sensitive to gluten and keep eating it, that can lead to inflammation and a cascade of negative reactions in the brain. In this video, I'll explain how gluten affects the brain and people who are sensitive to it, summarize the research connecting gluten intolerance to mental, behavioral, and neurodegenerative disorders, and tell you how to find out if you might be suffering from undiagnosed gluten intolerance. Ready? Let's dive in. Hey everyone, I'm Chris Kresser with another Tuesday tip video for you. 3 million Americans suffer from celiac disease and up to 18 million Americans suffer from non-celiac wheat or gluten sensitivity. While most people assume that gluten intolerance always causes digestive distress, this is not the case. Almost 50% of new patients diagnosed with celiac disease do not have the classic gastrointestinal symptoms. Moreover, for every one case of celiac disease that's diagnosed, there are more than six cases that remain undiagnosed, the majority of which present without gastrointestinal symptoms. This suggests that the majority of people who have some form of gluten intolerance don't experience significant digestive symptoms. In those cases, eating gluten affects other systems in the body. Research has shown that gluten intolerance can affect nearly every tissue in the body, including the brain, skin, endocrine system, stomach, liver, blood vessels, smooth muscles, and even the nucleus of cells. This explains why celiac disease and non-celiac wheat sensitivity are associated with an astonishing variety of diseases, from schizophrenia and epilepsy, to type one diabetes and osteoporosis, to dermatitis and psoriasis, to Hashimoto's, to peripheral neuropathy. In this video, I'm gonna focus on how gluten intolerance affects the brain. Scientists have found that gluten intolerance harms the brain via the gut-brain axis, the two-way system of communication between our gut and our brain. More specifically, gluten intolerance causes inflammation in the gut, which in turn drives inflammation in the brain. This process involves five distinct steps. Number one, eating gluten triggers gut dysbiosis, inflammation, and intestinal permeability, which is also known as leaky gut. Number two, leaky gut then allows compounds called lipopolysaccharides, which are produced by gut bacteria, to leak out of the intestine into the bloodstream. Lipopolysaccharide in the blood then triggers the immune system to release pro-inflammatory cytokines as a defense mechanism. Step three, lipopolysaccharides and pro-inflammatory cytokines in the circulation cause toxins to accumulate in the bloodstream, which leads to systemic inflammation throughout the entire body. Step four, when systemic inflammation reaches the brain, it causes neuroinflammation or inflammation in the brain. And then step five, neuroinflammation leads to brain dysfunction, mood disorders, cognitive impairment, and an increased vulnerability to neurodegenerative conditions like dementia, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's. Let's take a closer look at the link between gluten intolerance and specific brain-related disorders. While there's limited research about the effects of a gluten-free diet on anxiety and depression in people who are gluten intolerant, one study of celiac disease patients found that a one-year-long trial of a gluten-free diet significantly improved anxiety symptoms. And a small case study of people with depression and celiac disease who'd failed antidepressant medication found that a gluten-free diet quickly improved depressive symptoms. Several studies of people with bipolar disorder found that they have a higher prevalence of antibodies to gluten in their blood than healthy controls. Gluten intolerance has even been associated with schizophrenia and multiple personality disorder in some recent studies. There's also a link between gluten intolerance and autism spectrum disorder and ADHD. I'm not suggesting that gluten intolerance is the sole cause of these conditions or even a cause in most people, 
but research suggests that it plays a role in the gut-brain axis dysfunction that characterizes both autism spectrum disorders and ADHD, at least in some people. When people with gluten intolerance eat wheat or other gluten-containing foods, they aren't able to break down the gluten protein completely. This forms opiate-like peptides, which leak into the bloodstream and then enter the brain, where they interfere with transmissions between neurons and cause behavioral changes. Children with autism have been found to have high levels of antibodies to gluten, and a gluten-free diet sometimes, but not always, leads to positive changes in autistic behaviors. Likewise, a study found that a six-month gluten-free diet improved behavior and focus in people with ADHD and gluten intolerance. Finally, research has shown that eating gluten may predispose some people with gluten intolerance to develop dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and other neurodegenerative disorders. Inflammation in the gut can promote the deposition of amyloid plaques in the brain and neurofibrillary tangles, which are defining characteristics of Alzheimer's disease. And a recent study found that intestinal dysfunction represents one of the earliest manifestations of Parkinson's disease pathology, suggesting the disease originates in the intestine and spreads to the brain via the gut-brain axis. I've also seen many cases of gluten harming the brain in my clinical work with patients. For example, at least 50% of the kids I've treated on the autism spectrum or with ADHD tested positive for gluten or wheat intolerance and improved with a gluten-free diet. And as the studies I just mentioned would suggest, I've seen a strong link between gluten intolerance and mood disorders, cognitive dysfunction, and motor problems. Removing gluten from the diet in these cases has been a relatively simple but highly effective way of reducing symptoms and addressing the underlying pathology. Okay, it should be clear by now that eating gluten can harm the brain in numerous ways in people with celiac disease and with non-celiac wheat sensitivity. But how do you know if you or your children may be affected by this? I wish that was an easier question to answer. As I said earlier, there are more than six undiagnosed cases of celiac disease for every one diagnosed case. And non-celiac wheat sensitivity affects up to six times the number of people than celiac disease does. And it's even harder to diagnose, even when a doctor is looking for it, which isn't often enough. And most conventional testing for gluten intolerance is woefully inadequate. There are many reasons for this, which I outline in my free ebook on gluten intolerance. I also cover why celiac disease is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to sensitivity to gluten, how to determine if you're sensitive to gluten without lab testing, and how to heal your gut if you suffer from celiac or gluten intolerance. I'll put a link to this in the description. For now, I'll share two of the tests I've used in a clinic with my patients. The first is called Array3X from Cyrex Labs, and the second is the Wheat Zoomer from Vibrant Wellness. These tests aren't perfect, but they are far more comprehensive than conventional tests, which typically only look at antibodies to a specific part of the wheat protein, alpha-gliadin, and one specific enzyme, transglutaminase 2. But the reality is that wheat is a complex substance with many different proteins, agglutinins, prodynorphins, and byproducts of digestion, all of which we can react to. Cyrex Array 3 and the Wheat Zoomer test screen for sensitivity to all of these compounds, not just the two that are tested with the conventional lab assessment. You do need a doctor to order these tests, and in my experience, most conventional primary care or GI docs aren't familiar with them. Integrative or functional medicine clinicians or nutritionists are more likely to work with these particular labs. Okay, that's it for now. Make sure to check the description section for the link to my free ebook on gluten intolerance and other references and resources. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click the subscribe button in the lower right and tap the notification bell so you'll be updated when I release new content. And if you know someone that might benefit from this, please share it with them by clicking the share button right under the video. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you next time.